Today's indie 3D platformers exploit the past like no other genre in gaming. Ukulele, A Hat in Time, Poi, and many more all base themselves on two games, Super Mario 64 or Banjo-Kazooie, both of which are over 20 years old. Nostalgia is a powerful thing, especially when it comes to my beloved 3D platformers. There are two exceptions, however, Snake Pass, which we'll talk about some other time, and a game that's fallen under the radar. With the unique aesthetic and an even more creative gameplay mechanic behind it, Unbox Newbie's Adventure has a lot going for it. But does it live up to that potential and rise to the upper echelon of indie 3D platformers like A Hat in Time and Snake Pass, or does it join its brethren in the pit of mediocrity like Poi and Skylar and Plux? Let's unbox that answer together, shall we? <laughs> oh, that was funny. In Unbox, you play as Newbie, a sentient, self-delivering cardboard box created by the Global Postal Service. Newbie is a new model of box that everyone has high hopes for, though no one says what's different about him. The only noticeable variation between Newbie and the other boxes is that he doesn't talk. Newbie has to both prove himself a worthy new model to the company, while also saving GPS and the world from Boss Wild and his wild card gang. There's a surprising amount of subtext in Unbox, giving off serious Heart of Darkness vibes, but the story never explains explores this angle aside from the occasional line of dialogue from random NPCs. Instead, the narrative focuses on a mysterious box that helps you on your way to defeating the gang and trying to figure out what boss is up to. There are multiple diaries hidden throughout each level that are meant to be cryptic and shed a little light on the mysterious stranger, but they give away the twist at the end almost right away, so it hardly matters. That's probably for the better. This is not a story-driven game, but there are some highlights, like the characters. They each have their own colorful personalities, and they're all stereotypes, sure, like the always happy Bounce who gives you clues to hidden collectibles, the angry Grump, Hop the Prankster, and several more. But they work because there is no story, and they're not required to do much narrative heavy lifting other than cracking jokes and screaming the occasional, EGADS, MY ROAST IS ri WE NEED TO SAVE THE world. Instead, the focus is on gameplay, and the central premise is right there in the title. This is a 3D platformer that doesn't base itself on jumping like most others. Rather, the act of unboxing is the central mechanic. Think of it as a matryoshka, or a Russian nesting doll. You play as a cardboard box that lives inside five other boxes, all stacked within one another. By unboxing, you fling the next set of boxes out of your outermost layer, propelling you up in the air. You can do a little hop without unboxing, but most of your vertical movement movement comes from blasting yourself off like a suicidal rocket ship. The beauty in this is threefold. These boxes act as your hit points and ammo, so to speak, but more on that later. You can chain up to six of these unboxes together at once, provided you have a full set of boxes, allowing you to get some serious air time. And perhaps most importantly, is momentum. Not having any limbs to maneuver, you're forced to roll everywhere. That means you can get a good head of speed going downhill, then unbox to send yourself off into space. Or if you're stuck trying to go uphill or up some stairs, you can launch yourself to give you a little bit of head start that helps you climb. It's an ingenious system that adds so much to the 3D platformer. Unboxing changes the way you approach every obstacle, because you can't wait for platforms or easily jump over standard obstacles because you'd be too slow or even too fast. You need to fling yourself forward and hope for the best. The camera always does a great job of following you too, no matter how fast you're going or in what direction, or if you're going into funky places like underground, between rocks, or up into the air, it rarely gets stuck. If you do have a problem with the camera, you can zoom in or out, selecting one of three settings without having to access the options menu. There were a couple of instances where the camera got stuck in some ruins in the final level, but it only lasted a second, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Where this mechanic fails, or more accurately where the game fails this mechanic, is the idea that boxes represent your health. This is a very easy game. Enemies don't take away your health, they only stun you. The only time you lose a hit point is when you touch fire, which doesn't happen often to say the least. Falling down holes is the only way to die but that'll only happen if you're out of boxes, which itself is rare since pickups are everywhere. Even if you do run out, checkpoints are so numerous it's unlikely you'll spawn too far away from where you died anyway. It feels like a wasted opportunity, both in combat and platforming. Combat because they're isn't any. You just ground pound to knock out enemies, grab a fireworks launcher to shoot them, or do what's easiest, avoid them. Having the basic ability to maneuver tied to how much damage you take in combat could have been really interesting, but it's just not present here. For platforming, there's no real penalty for falling, and you can unbox up and over pretty much everything you come across. That wouldn't necessarily be a problem if Unbox had missions that played to this mechanic's strengths, forcing you to think in new ways or testing your reflexes. Or heck, even if they just didn't give you so many extra boxes 
boxes during the missions, but these quests are the worst part of Newbie's adventure. This is an open world game, so you're free to explore to your heart's content, but to earn the most stamps, which you need to unlock the boss fights and continue to the next world, you have to do these missions. The only thing the developers seem to have thought of to challenge the player was to not allow you to unbox during most of them, forcing you to hop around while climbing a mountain, collecting statues, or escorting another box. These missions require precise platforming, which not only goes against the point of unboxing, but it's also far too difficult since the physics are so loose thanks to the momentum. This causes issue when you have to solve what this game deems a puzzle. Like this one on Isle Cartaluna, where you have to move these rocks on the spinning platform, then move the platform itself to guide the rocks into these slots. It's a pain in the ass because the balls in the platform move way too fast, and too far, when you barely touch them. Or this mission, Parcel Peaks, where you have to go up this mountain without unboxing for no reason. You can climb it no problem with unboxing, just blasting yourself up the side of it having to stop for refills only once or twice, but having to do it the normal way is almost impossible with these physics and these tiny platforms. You can see how the developers tried to provide a challenge, but taking away the thing that makes this game special is not the answer. The mission that I think typifies Unbox's missions problem is another puzzle. You have to hit blocks in the correct order, but it tells you what order to hit them in. The only option is a handful of enemies with fireworks that shoot at you, but their rockets only attach balloons to you that send you flying up for a few seconds, and there are so few it's effortless to avoid them. Perhaps if you had to guess what order to press the buttons based on clues the game gave you rather than straight up answers, or if there were more obstacles in your way, this could have been interesting. Instead, it feels like busy work because the developers couldn't make missions difficult or even fun with the unboxing mechanic. Now I know how bad all that sounds. You hear the last few minutes of this video and you think, boy this game must suck, but I love it actually. The joy of Unbox comes not from its missions, but from exploring its worlds. I hate that level where you have to climb the mountain without unboxing so much because of how much fun it is to climb with unboxing. There are four levels, a tropical island called Paradise Isle, a snowy summit called Parcel Peaks, a jungle location, Isle Cartelina, and a hub world that doesn't have a name for some reason. Yes, they're all fairly generic in their theming, but they make up for it in their scale and in their hidden areas. Each level is jam-packed with hidden collectibles, from stamps, the main collectible, golden tape, trap zippies to rescue, and the aforementioned diary entries. Some of them are out in the open and easy to find, but the vast majority of them are tucked away in hidden alcoves, caves, underwater, or at your mom's house, and that means you need to get creative in how to find them. All these collectibles allow you to unlock costumes from different skins, hat, and facial hair. So while the fun of exploring is reward enough, at least for me, it's nice to have that little extra incentive. And it is fun to explore. It's a blast to zoom around these worlds, finding hidden areas, or just seeing how high you can get before crashing back down to Earth. How literally high you can get, I mean, not... Anyway, see an obstacle that'd be a pain in the ass to jump across normally? That's okay, just fly across with your boxes. Think that platform's too high to reach? Think again. This is a great idea to base a game around, if only for the exploration, but it could have been so much more. Unbox feels like a game built around one idea. That idea is great, it's fun, innovative, and provides a great means of travel that you can't find in any other game, like web swinging in Spider-Man. But the developers didn't do enough with this mechanic, nor did they design the quests around it, instead doing the opposite and taking it away from you most of the time. This is an idea I'd love to see further explored, but that's unlikely since the lead designer of Unbox, Jack Bognar, left developer Prospect Games and now works for a different studio. Unbox is a game where you'll have a lot of fun exploring its worlds, meaning it's goofy goofy characters, finding hidden collectibles, and trying on new costumes. But the quests and the story are both forgettable at best. This could have been so much more if they went all in on the unboxing mechanic, but for whatever reason, they didn't, and that's a shame. I think I'll end up liking Unbox more than most people who play it, but I can't help but love the idea of unboxing, and I'll always respect a developer who tries something different, especially with 3D platformers. But what do you think? It's got its problems, but I strongly suggest you give Unbox a try if you haven't already. You might even even like it or not I don't know either way thanks for watching and I'll see you next time